Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Linder. It is Monday morning, June 17th, and we are tracking the tropics, of course. National Hurricane Center is now given the chances of development or the system in the Gulf that we've been talking about over the last seven days increased to 70%. Jeff, it looks like we're going to have our first named storm, but regardless of that, impacts are still similar. One thing I have noticed, though, with the latest model runs is the, especially the KPF, the heavier rain has sort of shifted a little bit to the west and southwest. But as we know, with these type of events, you can't get too hung up on exactly where the models are showing how much rain and that type of thing. We really need to be weather aware all the way from Louisiana down through the coastal bend, all the way down to South Texas, and even inland now, all the way to the hill country. Yeah, that's exactly right. And we do have a, a fairly complex weather pattern developing here in the Gulf of Mexico. So, you know, we've been talking about this for, I don't know, four or five days now. And when you get these, these kind of Central American gyres like we have here, you can see this is a very, very large area of circulation that's developed, you know, extending from Western Cuba through the South Central Gulf and then kind of wrapping back around here across Central America. And we're looking in this area right here over Southern Mexico, the Western portion of the Yucatan. This is most likely um, where we're starting to see maybe a little bit of a consolidation as this kind of moves out here to the West Northwest over to the uh, Southern Gulf of Mexico. But this isn't there. There again, like I said, it's 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 complex, and where I'm going to show you why it's complex here in the Western Gulf. The other thing is, notice the moisture surge. So extending well out to the north, now coming up to southern Louisiana, the deep tropical moisture is reaching the upper Texas coast. So we are going to start to see those showers and thunderstorms develop uh, as we get into today, uh, in more specific, and a lot more as we get into tomorrow. So this is what I'm going to talk about the complexity of this. Uh, this is the GFS for tomorrow at uh, around uh, midday on Tuesday. And you can see that it has this elongated area, kind of a low pressure here. So you have one possible low pressure center uh, down here in the southern Gulf of Mexico. And then it, it kind of forms this other uh, low pressure, a little bit tighter, more defined low pressure center east of Brownsville. Um, and this has been something that the global models have been kind of hinting on off and on is, is there's this vorticity maximum or some spin in the atmosphere that's coming up from the Western Caribbean that's going to clip the Yucatan and kind of swing around on the north side of this overall circulation down here in the south and western Gulf of Mexico. And this particular model, the GFS, tightens this little bit of vorticity up and spins it up into a tropical a closed low, maybe a tropical depression or a tropical storm as it pivots kind of to the west towards the South Texas coast. And so that is one potential um, that we could see as we get into tomorrow. Um, you know, just looking at the satellite, I'm not seeing, you know, a lot of vortex. Well, I'm not seeing a good consolidation of activity here in the Yucatan. So I don't know. This may be slightly overdone. If you look at the European for the same time, um, or the next day, you can see it is much more broad and has this more broad kind of what we see in the southern Gulf right now moving out here. Um, and doesn't really indicate that that uh, northern portion of, of the circulation kind of spinning up and taking over. And so this is this is kind of what we're dealing with, this this uncertainty with where any specific low pressure does it stay broad like the european shows does it tighten up a little bit more like the gfs shows uh other guidance are kind of you know on both camps of this and if you look at the ensembles they're they're kind of spread out too so the ensembles have development down here in the southern gulf uh we do have members that show development off the south texas coast and so we're really going to just have to keep an eye on things as we get over the next 24 hours or so regardless of how this all plays out I don't think it really changes the impacts a whole lot for the Texas coast or the upper Texas coast, except possibly on the rainfall side of things. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, as we've been talking about um, all, uh, the last several days, too, the convection is north of the center. We're still seeing that. Actually, we're seeing showers and thunderstorms starting to move onto the coast this morning around Galveston Bay and just east of there. And this is just Monday morning, and we're looking at an event over the next several days through Thursday morning. So, yeah, we're seeing these rain totals. As I said earlier, some of the heavier rain shifting off a little bit to the west, but uh, again, <clears throat> don't get too hung up on exactly what these models and where the amounts are. This is just a general, this is a model. So it's just giving us a general idea of the amounts that we're expecting over the next several days. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. We've, we've seen this, if, if for those that have been watching this couple of days, uh, Saturday, the heaviest rain was kind of focused here on the right. south central Louisiana coast. And and now it's shifted down towards the, the coastal men, the Matagorda Bay area. And notice there's a pretty strong gradient here between a lot of rain and really not a lot of rain at all. And this is kind of that that high pressure over the southeast U.S. that's that's trying to build in and ridge in from the northeast. And that is that is going to uh, result in this kind of gradient we see. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this really plays out. Um, you know, we're on that we're on that northeast flank of whatever circulation develops. We're in a really tropical air mass. Uh, we're talking moisture levels that are are really really high for our area, and so you know it's it's the potential is certainly here south of I ten to get some really heavy rains and some flooding rains as we get into Tuesday afternoon evening and into Wednesday morning. That's when the 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 meat of this looks to come into the southeast Texas and and Houston Galveston area. So the weather prediction center does have a moderate risk of flash flooding, maybe even sneaking up a little bit north of I-10. So this is for tomorrow. And again, this is really tomorrow afternoon and evening. And then going into Wednesday, this big moderate risk area expands to the west. So really from the Houston area out to San Antonio, down towards Corpus Christi. Uh, and a big portion of the state getting into the slight risk area here. Um, yeah. This is pretty good news um, when you look yep. out here to the central Texas area. Yeah, they need the rain out there. Uh, that that area just west of San Antonio has been in a drought for years now. So hopefully this will be uh, a drought buster for them. And uh, yeah, like you said, well needed rain. Yeah, I wouldn't sleep on it out here. You know, even though even though they need the yeah. rain, even back down towards the Rio Grande, um, the type of rainfall rates and the amounts that we could get in a short period of time could go from we need rain to flash flooding, especially those typically dry creeks and rivers uh, mm -hmm. out in this area. This is the time of year we have a lot of people out in these areas doing a lot of recreational things. So don't sleep on the rainfall threat and the flash flood threat out here in southwest, south central Texas as we get into uh, this is probably more Wednesday into Thursday and then probably closer to Friday as we get towards the Rio Grande. Yeah, that hill country, you can get this. Uh, dry creek beds that in just literally in just minutes uh you can see a wall of water coming down and and uh, have a uh, flash flooding event yeah you gotta you gotta watch it out there you gotta be paying attention so right. anybody out there doing camping or hanging out along the rivers great today and probably even tomorrow but mid late week you're gonna pay attention uh the other thing we're, we're keeping a close eye on is the tides uh they kind of keep creeping up every time we get a, a forecast uh now looking at so this is the biggest the coastal flooding issue is going to start as we get into tomorrow on Tuesday, especially at the times of high tide. I don't think tomorrow is going to be that big of a deal. We could get some some minor flooding at times of high tide, but it is that Wednesday morning high tide that we're really starting to focus on and keying on. And you can see this is Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. And we're talking water levels five to six feet above uh, mean low, low water. So mean low, low water is kind of your normal algae line, your barnacle line along the coast, kind of the reference a lot of folks use. But anywhere from five to six feet from uh, around Sabine Pass and High Island all the way down towards uh, the Freeport area and even in the upper portion now of Galveston Bay around Seabrook and Shore Acres, we're starting to see some of those numbers. So um, this is certainly going to produce coastal flooding. Our, our threshold is around four and a half feet on the upper Texas coast when we start having issues. And so, you know, those typical low-lying coastal areas near the near the coast, Highway 87 over towards Rollover and High Island, you're probably gonna get overwashed there. You're probably gonna have some debris up on the highway. 
um, west end of Galveston Island, Blue Water Highway, uh, Surfside, Treasure, uh, Treasure Island. Those are very susceptible areas to coastal flooding. Um, we see water up past the dunes into areas where we have the elevated homes down in that area. Um, Tiki Island, San Leon, Seabrook, Toddville Road area around Seabrook, we could have some issues, Shore Acres, and then even up in, in the Harris County around the uh, Lynchburg uh, Ferry Landing, the east and west approaches, they're just not very high. And so this type of tide levels could certainly put water over those. So we, we definitely want people to be aware this is gonna happen in the dark on Wednesday morning. So this is before the sun comes up, we're gonna have this high tide and this coastal flooding take place. And so you really need to be watching this aspect of yep. it. And this is, I just put pleasure pier on here for this one. And you can see probably around five, five and a half feet, but you can see the, the uncertainty possibly going up over six feet here. So you need to be watching this on the coast as we get into Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Yeah, and Jeff, um, we haven't really been talking about the wind impact so much, but the latest, at least short-range, high-resolution models have kind of been um, picking up on some wind now. Yeah, and, and again, this is a function of the pressure gradient we have. So again, that building high pressure over the southeast United States, lowering pressure uh, down in the western Gulf of Mexico, and, you're, and you're, we're tightening that pressure gradient um between those two features and you can see here this is the her so this is just one model but this is the her and it's this is uh the wind speeds for um uh tuesday evening uh and as you can see we, we have frequent 30 to 35 knots here across the coastal waters even into the coast uh, maybe even getting up to 40 and, and 45 uh, knots so it, it would not surprise me at all if we saw 45 uh, miles per hour along the coast, and, and we're also getting into these squalls, right? So these passing, you can kind of see it here on the model, uh, these little dots or the squalls and heavier showers that the model's picking up on. And those could come in and produce 50 mile an hour winds. Um, and I think this is probably a coastal, you know, coastal county beach area, maybe that first, uh, first uh, area of coastal counties um but as these squalls come in you could get some 40 50 mile an hour wind so maybe some isolated power outages not anticipating anything widespread um and even up towards the houston metro area we could get some gusty winds with some of this so it, it's going to be nasty it's going to start getting nasty as we get into tomorrow tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening and then overnight Tuesday into Wednesday morning, that's when we're going to kind of have all the weather, the heavy rain, the highest tides, the rough seas, the gusty winds, all of that is going to be in that time frame. This, this kind of shifts west. Like you said, it kind of moves off to the west. And so I had a couple questions. Hey, what about the stalling? You know, could this hang around? The answer is really no. This is this with that high pressure to the southeast. This is going to move on to the west. Weather conditions improve here as we get into later Wednesday and Thursday. We can still have some heavy rains, um, but the winds will come down and the tides will start to subside. And we're not anticipating any stalling or slowing of this and, and things like we've seen in the past with other weather events. Yeah, not stalling, but but uh, certainly a fairly slow moving system. So uh, anyway, be weather aware. And yeah, those winds really picking up there, as you would expect, uh, the gradient plus getting a little bit closer to the center of circulation starting around Port O'Connor and areas south of there. Um, Jeff, good stuff. Thank you very much. We'd like to remind everybody to click and subscribe on the Weather Insights YouTube channel. Get the latest weather information and update on the tropics. Be sure to share with family and friends so they can stay informed as well. And join us on the next Weather Insights podcast.